Today, I wanna to share some tips on how you can get better videos of your clocks. I see a lot of videos of clocks on social media, and I just wanna share some tips to help you. You might be thinking, well, this is gonna cost a lot of money, I need a special camera and equipment. Well, it's not gonna cost that much because chances are you probably already have a lot of what you need. And we're going to get into that today. I've listed links in the description as well for some budget-friendly equipment that I'm going to be showing you today. First, you should know that I don't use a high-end camera for my videos. I don't. I've been using cell phones for years. In fact, uh, a lot of my videos were shot on this old iPhone 6S. Um, I think it's probably maybe five, six years old now. I have a 12 mini uh, that I upgraded to and what I'm using right now for this video and it shoots in 4K. If your cell phone has a good video camera on it, there's no need to buy another camera. They work great. So there's many things I've learned over the years through experience and having to watch lots of how-to videos when I've run into a problem. I'm gonna sum it up briefly for you today. If you wanna take great videos of your clocks, these things make a huge difference. Later, I'll get into some advanced things like editing and how I do the rotating shots. But first, let's get started with some basics. Here's number one, how to make your clock stand out. You need a clutter-free background. If you have a lot of knickknacks and other things around your clock, your audience's attention isn't going to be just on the clock. It's going to be on all these other things in the background. Oh, what's that? Uh, that's neat. And um, it's, it's distracting. So uh, there's some things you can do. If you can clear out uh, clutter so that uh, your clock is the focal point, or if you do have, say, a clock room and there's lots of other clocks around, uh, if you can zoom in uh, or get really close to the clock for the shot, that way um, not so many other clocks are in there uh, distracting from the one clock that you wanna show, that really helps. And for, let's say for smaller clocks, uh, one thing that I've done is uh, sometimes I don't have a lot of space to work with and I don't wanna have to move everything around, uh, but I purchased this white foam board from Walmart and it's 20 by 30 inches and it works great. I can get um, two pieces, one to set the clock on and uh, one to put behind it and I can get some great pictures. And it's just, it just shows the clock on a white background. And it works great for small mantle clocks and alarm clocks or watches. That's one thing you can do for filming smaller clocks and watches. It's just great to have on hand for that. Number two is how to avoid shaky video. Use a tripod with a cell phone mount. I see a lot of shaky videos of beautiful clocks on social media. And this is just a simple step you can do that really makes your video look a lot more professional. So uh, chances are you might already have a tripod and you need a cell phone mount. It uh, just mounts on the tripod head and it's super easy to clamp your phone down and gives you that uh, stable shot. Um, I've got a link to one in the description. I also have a link to a tripod that comes with a cell phone mount, and these are very affordable uh, options to help get that stable video. Now, another option for getting stable video is to use a cell phone swivel stand like what I have here. And what this does is it clamps to your desk or to a table, and then your cell phone goes right in here and it swivels 360 degrees and it's great for getting close-up shots of a movement or dial that, you know, when you have the tripod, uh, its legs are wider at the bottom. And I've ran into a problem a few times when I've been trying to get a really close-up shot and because I don't like to use the zoom. Um, I don't like to do that. I like to get as close as I can to get high quality uh, video and um, the tripod legs were keeping me from getting close enough uh, to get that shot of the movement. And so uh, the swivel stand really took care of that problem. And I think the one that I have listed, it cost me less than $20. Uh, 
and uh, it's really helped out uh, with those kinds of videos. Number three is how to get better lighting. You need more lighting than you think you do. Um, if you have a room that has a lot of windows that lets a lot of natural light in, uh, that is awesome and that works great. But if you're filming at night or if you're filming in a room that doesn't have that many windows, you need additional lighting. And sometimes an overhead light just isn't enough. And so that's why I recommend this affordable uh, light kit. There's a lot of them on Amazon. I think I paid less than $50 uh, for this three umbrella light kit. And um, it's worked great for me and getting the lighting that I need. I use it uh, for almost all of my videos. And how I use it is I place uh, one umbrella light on the left, about 45 degrees out from the clock, and the other umbrella light on the right, 45 degrees out from the clock. And then the third light, it's a little bit shorter. Uh, sometimes I place that behind the clock uh, so that it gets some lighting uh, behind it. And while I'm positioning the lights in the front, I'm trying to avoid getting a glare or reflection uh, in the glass. This is really hard to do on mantle clocks because most of them have the convex uh, glass bezel and it's super hard to avoid that. Um, and it's hard in the rotating shots as well. Uh, but that's kind of how I use them um, and to get good lighting on all sides of the clock. Number four is how to rotate your clock. So uh, I use this little product display. Uh, it's motorized. There's a little button right here on the back and uh, this works great for small clocks. It does have a weight limit. I can't remember if it's 25 or 33 pounds. I have a link in the description for one that is a little stronger. It can do 44 pounds. So uh, if you're interested in rotating your clock, check that out. Um, for some of my videos, I've had to make custom stands to support the clock that I'm rotating. Um, I think I've done two cuckoo clocks that I've rotated and I've just, I don't know, just used different things I've found around the house and kind of MacGyvered them to work and support the clock. Uh, I made a stand for a Friedrich Mouth wall clock and that was a little scary because um, it was a little wobbly while I was rotating it. And I had to rotate it by hand because it was so heavy that the motor couldn't turn it. And it wasn't my clock. But thankfully it didn't fall. Um, so if you do do this, uh, you may need to uh, make some additional uh, little stands or, or something to support your clock uh, while you're rotating it because it would be a tragedy if it were to fall off. And then uh, for mantle clocks, some of them are really wide. So what I've done is I've taken a board and I've set it on top of the rotating display and then put the mail clock on that. Uh, try to make sure it's centered so it's not tipping uh, to one side. And that's how I've um, videoed the mantle clock spinning. And then when I get into the editing, I kind of trim some of that out so that you don't see the board um, or I, I'll get into that later. So those are four things that you can do to help you get better video of your clocks considering the background surrounding your clock uh, using a tripod with a cell phone mount or a swivel stand with a cell phone mount, uh, having enough lighting, and um, maybe using a product display to rotate your clock or just uh, getting different angled shots of your clock can really improve the quality of your video. And there are links in the description for all the budget-friendly equipment that I've mentioned so if you want to take this a step further by editing your video, uh, adding text or music, uh, removing the background from the rotating shots, here are some tips. I edit my videos on this 11-year-old computer. It's a 2010 Mac Pro I got used. It was broken when I got it and I've upgraded it over the years to keep it running well. The point is you don't need to go buy a new computer to do video editing. Chances are, if you've bought a new computer in the last three years or so, it's probably fine to do some HD video editing. I do recommend eight gigabytes of RAM and plenty of hard drive space because video files do take up a lot of storage. And also when you're doing video work, don't have a lot of other applications open, uh, just your software because it is a resource hog. 
So when I'm done filming, I connect the phone with a USB cable and import the footage to a folder. I like having it all in one place. Then I open the video editing software. I'm using Adobe Premiere, but there are other programs out there you can use. One basic one that I think is free for iPhone and Mac users is iMovie, and it's so easy to use. You can even edit videos on your iPhone uh, if you want to. If you're using Windows, I have a link in the description for free video software that I found. Uh, I haven't used these, but I'm sure there are tutorials you can follow online. To start, import your footage, and we'll be working in what's called a timeline. And in this timeline, we're going to have layers of video and audio that we want to trim and put in just the right place so it flows well with our clock story. First, I drag my narration videos onto the timeline because it's the foundation of where I'll place my additional footage. Next, I do adjust uh, my audio uh, by using the normalize option and a single band compressor. I have it dialed in for my voice and it just gives it uh, a little bit better audio quality. Uh, so when you're playing back your video on your software, make sure, you're, make sure your voice is loud enough. And uh, if it's not, there should be some adjustments in whatever software that you're using to uh, make it uh, louder and uh, make it sound better. Another thing that really helps the flow of my video are transitions. Uh, transitions are what we use between uh, different clips uh, just to help them flow into each other better. And uh, probably the three that I use the most are a fade to black, a cross dissolve, and sometimes a fade to white if I'm working uh, with a white background. To start my video, I do a fade to black transition and I go through my video footage and I cut out all the places that I paused or if I messed up on the script, uh, I want to take that out. So uh, a lot of video editing is just cutting out the unwanted material and keeping uh, what's good. Once I finish trimming uh, the narration video, I like to add other pictures and video uh, to display while I'm talking about these clocks. So you won't see me in the video because this other video is actually playing on top of my narration. For the rotating shots, I usually use a green screen, but the white foam board will also work to give you the white background. I think I used that when I was doing um, an alarm clock video. I bought a stand and green screen on Amazon. I've placed links in the description. It's really not that expensive. I think the hardest part is uh, where do you store it? Do you want to take it down every time and risk wrinkling the green screen? Or is there a place that you can uh, leave it up that's out of the way? That's the struggle uh, that I've had. But it makes doing these rotating shots uh, just so easy because the green screen allows me to remove the background. And like how I talked about the lighting earlier, we want to place our lights at 45 degrees out on the left and right of the clock. And then a third light in between the clock and the green screen, kind of below. Um, we don't want to get the light in our shot, but we want to try to eliminate any shadow that might be on the green screen um, from the clock. And also you want to have a little bit of space between your clock and the green screen. So that will help later when we edit. So after I record this, I import the video and I drag it to the timeline, but I need a white background underneath. So I'm going to uh, do what's called a color mat and make it white and place it underneath uh, because we want to have a white background. Next, I'm going to go to effects and select ultra key. This allows me to select the green color from the green screen and remove it from our video. And I may have to make some fine adjustments, but it usually works pretty well. And then if there's anything below the clock that's in front of the green screen, or if the green screen uh, didn't fill up my entire shot and there's uh, footage outside of it, I want to create an opacity mask so that I can basically erase those areas that I don't want. I want the white to come through. Uh, we don't want to see the wall or the product display table. So what I'll do is I'll create these little masks and set the opacity to zero. Another way I've done it is actually by making some rectangular 
uh, white boxes that are the same color as the background and just placing those over. Uh, so that's another way uh, that you could remove it too. It just kind of depends on what your software can do. And be sure to check the description for uh, the link to the green screen and to the stand if this is something you want to explore. To end my videos, I like to do a white background with a photo or video of the clock and have some text on it. Sometimes I uh, take a portion of the audio from the clock chiming and I put that in there as well. With that last shot of the clock, I usually take a screenshot of that and that becomes my thumbnail. A thumbnail is kind of a cover or title page uh, for a video that you're uploading. Um, Facebook and YouTube have options for you to add a thumbnail um, and you can find all about that. There's great resources on how to make a good thumbnail for your YouTube channel or uh, if you're doing Facebook. And then another thing you can add is music. Um, I like YouTube. Uh, they have uh, just, it just seems to be the best platform for me. And they have a great library of music that you can uh, access and copyright free. Um, on certain music, you do need to list the, um, the author and the song title, but others you don't. Um, I usually search for attribution not required, uh, but I still list the author and the song title just to give credit where credit's due. Uh, but there's so much you can do uh, with videos and it's really not that hard. You just got to get your feet wet. So when I'm finally finished with the video, uh, I've done all the editing I want to do. Uh, I want to make sure I save it again, but then I need to export it. And this is where your computer uh, bakes the photos, the video, the audio, the transitions, the text, everything that you've put into it. It bakes it all into one file. And there's a lot of file formats out there, but typically you want a .mp4 file. That's in uh, 1080p, um, that's uh, the standard for HD, or uh, 4K if you're shooting in 4K. And then choose where you wanna save your video and hit export or whatever the option is on your computer and plan not to use your computer for the next few minutes 30 minutes, maybe an hour or two, depending on how fast it is, uh, because it is going to be uh, making that file for you. So take a coffee break, uh, get a snack, and then when it's done, uh, come back, but don't upload it yet. You need to watch it and make sure. I found out that uh, doing this really helps me uh, save myself from mistakes. I think there was one video that I thought I had it ready, I exported it, watched it, I found a mistake. So I would fix the mistake, I exported it again, and I found another mistake. I think I ended up doing that three times. So make sure you watch your video before you upload it. That way um, you know if you've made a mistake. Once it's ready to upload, I open YouTube and I start uploading the video. I'll add a title and description and uh, the thumbnail for that. And uh, there's a few other little things, but uh, that's, that's basically it. Oh, um, be sure to copy the link and share it. Uh, share it on social media so that you get more views. And in YouTube, you'll be able to see how many people are watching your video, which is, which is nice. Wow, I've covered a lot of material in a short amount of time. If you have any questions, please uh, comment and I will do my best to help you. Um, also, if you're starting a clock YouTube channel or you've started one, uh, would you comment? And I will subscribe to you and uh, hopefully you've subscribed to me, um, but uh, we can help each other out that way. Uh, also, I have a few t-shirt designs for sale that have to do with clocks. Um, some of them are really fun. And if you could check out the description, uh, I have the link there. But thank you so much for watching today. I hope you have a great weekend and fun making clock videos.